The stock market has just opened for today, although we do see the majority of stocks down. Some notable gainers so far, Broadcom up over 4%. However, our focus in today's episode is going to be on Salesforce. Now, this has been trending downwards over the last few months. In fact, negative 18% over the last six months. And this company is down around 20% from its all-time highs. So we're going to take a look at this company, understand for what is a fairly high quality company. Is it at enough margin of safety to consider in our undervalued companies today? Now, we're going to very briefly touch upon their earnings. They did report a couple of weeks ago and pretty decent if we do say so. In fact, they beat both on the earnings per share, on the revenue and a triple very nice signal here by raising the full year profit outlook. Now, a few things just to note. In fact, one of the main things to understand with this company when you consider it, do you believe it will be able to continue growing the same way it has done historically? Now, we're going to take a look at that data shortly. But in fact, we can see year on year in terms of the more recent quarter versus last year, same quarter. It is up around high single digit at 8%. As we mentioned, earnings per share looking very good. 256 above market anticipation of 236 and we can see as well similar to eps a nice beat on the revenue we also do like to hear when the bottom line net income has increased going from around 1.43 billion in this quarter and we can see clearly as well up from the same quarter last year so it does look positive in terms of their recent earnings as we already said they did also increase their full year expectations which we will take a look at and when we take a look over the last 12 months we do note it is up around 11 percent although that is certainly lagging behind the smp however over the last 10 years it is up around 329 percent outperforming the S&P during this period. As we mentioned, it is down 20% from this all-time highs, right now sitting in the mid to lower end of the 52-week range. A double buy rating, seeking alpha Wall Street, a hold from Quant. And we do also note in terms of the yield, 0.64% forward looking with a forward P of 24.7 SMP sitting right now around 23. So not far along. Now, in terms of looking at their latest investor presentation, this will just be from that more recent quarter. And what we do note, as we said, their total revenue is up around 8%. When we take a look at it shortly, historically, we will note that the declining top line revenue is something for serious consideration, as that will ultimately change the way that we do value this company. But nonetheless, 8% on the top line in terms of an increase, earnings per share around 15%, so nice double digit. And as always, not just the revenue we focus on, we also want to see an increase to the margin. And as we can note here from the 190 basis points, some operating efficiency. So it does look good in terms of those results. When we take a look at their guidance, as we said, they did increase their full year guidance, expecting around 38 billion for that full year, which will be around eight to 9%. In fact, over the last 10 years, pretty much every single year has been double digits. So we are starting to see this decline operating cash flow growth looking very strong at the 23 to 25 percent point so let's take a continued look now one thing that we do want to point out as we will cover shortly as well this company does like to return excess cash to investor pockets as we saw they've paid out around 772 million in dividends and they've also repurchased a fair amount of shares in fact they have reduced that share count by around one percent Always good, not just increases to the dividend, but also, in fact, when companies do share buybacks. So let's take a look at the actual details. Now, typically on this channel, we do get a dividend safety score for each company. However, as we do note, they've only recently started to pay a dividend. Therefore, this number isn't quite calculated yet. So let's get into the actual metrics. The first one is the free cash flow payout. Now, as we do note, only recently been paying. So a 7% on a trading 12 month basis, 13% over the next 12 months, well below our 60% that we want to see as a maximum. Therefore, we are fairly confident we will see a very nice either high single digit increase to the dividend or if all goes well, a double digit increase. As we always say, free cash flow per share, consistent increases over the longer term. That is exactly what we get with this company. In fact, more than seven times over the last 10 years and anticipated to continue over the next 12 months to around $12.70. Then this is the main thing that we want to bring to your attention today 
is the sales growth very strong double digit however full year 2024 at 11% as we just saw for the full year of FY25 financial year they do see this around 8 to 9% so do factor in they have had some historical very strong growth although we are starting to see this slow down and ultimately this will affect the margin of safety and the overall valuation you will place on this company total sales though nonetheless has been increasing very very strongly around seven times to 34.9 billion in 2024 as we saw from their investor presentation they have been doing share buybacks although we do note this has only started recently from around 2023 where it was 997 now 980 previous to that in fact they were diluting your position quite significantly in fact around 50 percent from that 2015 position to 997 although they have now started in combination to releasing a dividend also been doing share buyback so always nice to note hopefully they do continue this theme of doing share buybacks rather than what we have historically seen as diluting your position do remember roic a very important metric on this channel 10 percent or more give us faith management are able to effectively allocate their capital now look 8% in 24 is nice to note given how historically low it has been 10% on a trading 12 month basis again nice to note this moving in the right direction from the lows of 2022 one thing we would say though is this consistency does worry us a little bit in fact the inconsistency of this nature that is why when we do come to look at a margin of safety we may add a little bit larger than what we historically do on this channel then free cash flow margin, nothing really to say other than very strong, above the minimum 5% we want to see on a year-on-year -year basis. In fact, increasing from 14% to 28, 32 on a trading 12 months, so very nice to note. And operating margin, whilst we want to see a minimum of 16%, this has only really been hit in 2024. Previous to that, the margins were very, very low. So again, some considerations here. Whilst in the more recent years, numbers metrics are looking favorable, do notice this isn't something that has been consistent over a large period of time. Then we get to the net debt to EBITDA. Remember the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, correlating to both balance sheet strength, dividend safety. And these are the number of years it would take the companies to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Zero in 2024, zero over the next 12 months. So it wouldn't even take them one day to pay off all of that debt net of cash on hand looking very healthy and if they did have a dividend safety score we do believe this would be sitting in the very safe criteria so let's look at insider ownership 3.2 percent we do see around 723 million worth of sales over the last year and whilst we do see buys it is fairly insignificant at 100 million in comparison now there were some selling in fact in the more recent quarter of 13 million again just for the transparency to show you who they are in fact we do need a few insiders in the month of august as well as september as well as in fact the coo the chief operating officer selling quite a number of shares now whilst we do show this information for insider selling we don't see it as a bearish signal look ultimately insiders sell many many reasons that we are unaware of whether it's personal or financial we want to be spotting the insider buying which ultimately they buy because they believe the share price will go up hence why we call that a bullish signal now on the flip side we have the institutional ownership just above 80 percent we see around 12.9 billion worth of sales over the last year we see nearly double around 22 billion over the same time period therefore institutions have been buying a lot more and we also note that in the more recent quarter as well as q1 of 2024 so overall institutions are buying a lot more as well as the more recent period but as always do your own due diligence never copy any of their trades now we also want to let you know we have released our latest weekly article if you want access to this or any others you can click on the pinned comment below to sign up and read straight away we've also released 25 undervalued stocks that we do believe for the month of september for your consideration you can grab that below as well and we also run through each one that does sit within our own portfolio so go ahead and check those out so let's take a quick look not just at their top line revenue but also their bottom line we already mentioned that their growth has been very strong double digit pretty much every year this will ultimately be the first year where it won't be at the eight to nine percent projected point and we do note very nice growth 5.4 billion to 35 in 2024 now what we want to point out here is what does the bottom line tell us is there any consistency does it follow the top line and ultimately the answer unfortunately as well is no a lot of inconsistency year on year we notice 2015 2016 a net loss and we can also see on a year on year basis there is no clear trend even though we do note the top line has been increasing so 
Not the best of sign when top line is consistently increasing 10, 15, 20% year on year, and we don't get a similar trend on the bottom line. So again, another thing just to be aware of with Salesforce. Then we want to look at the health of this company, which we do believe to be fairly strong. Total cash versus total debt. Similar to the top line revenue, cash has been increasing pretty consistently over the last year, around 1 billion in 2015 to 12.6 in that latest quarter. Now, do remember, as always, in isolation, these numbers don't tell us anything, which is why we are comparing it to total debt numerically and directionally, which again follows the theme of revenue as well as cash has been increasing 1.5 billion in 2015, around 12 billion in the latest quarter. So not far off that total cash position, as we saw balance sheet based on that net debt EBITDA metric does look secure. So let's take a look at how they formed overall over the last four quarters and expectations moving forwards. As we do note, 100% track record beat every single quarter over the last year. Nice substantial beat in quarter two that we just ran through. And over the next two quarters, they are anticipating double digit growth to the EPS year on year. In fact, 11.16 in Jan 26, bringing the forward P down to 22.4. Remember that will ultimately be based on whether or not you see management hitting those targets and expectations. Now moving on to the grading. Now they do get a D minus for valuation. As we can see here, 24.7 on the forward P non-gap, 23.1. So you are paying a very small 7% premium against the sector if you are adding to Salesforce in today's episode. And that is a pretty much a constant theme. No matter which valuation method you use, you are paying a premium. But as always, sometimes it is justified. Sometimes you can argue it is warranted. So in terms of the underlying metrics for the growth, they get a B plus. So revenue year on year, double digit 10% against the sector low single digit of 3%. Revenue moving forwards 9.6 as we saw for the full year around 8 to 9. Still higher than the sector median of 6.6. .6. And one thing we always draw your attention to, the earnings per share over the next 3 to 5 years, 18% versus the sector of 15. So overall, not too far off the sector as a whole, but although as we did see, you are paying a little bit of a premium. So now let's move on to the final one, which is the profitability, where they do get the A+, 76% in terms of their margin gross versus the sector of 50. Bottom line, around 15%, as we can see here, the sector of 3.81. And finally, the cash from operation, significantly better at 12.1 billion versus 96 million. So it does look like it is a massively warranted that this company does deserve a premium against others. And we do get that double buy rating with the hold from quant, the D minus on valuation, B plus on growth, and an A plus on profitability. As always, we do like to compare their performance against others in the application software industry. We have SAP, Adobe, Intuit, some very well-known other companies. And when we do look over the last year, what we can see, CRM is up around 12%. Although it is one of the lowest performers in the competitors, as we can clearly see here. Over the last five years, when we do compare, CRM is up 62%, the lowest performer. And over the last 10 years, we can see up 332% towards the lower end again. So if you do group it with these companies, we can see that others do look fairly stronger. But as always, past performance is not an indicator of future performance. So something, again, just to consider. Now, importantly, let's get into the valuation model. And as always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now, our intrinsic value of $318, how we got that, we ran it through the DCF model. We have the free cash flow year on year. Now, average growth is 31%, and we've gone for 10%, which we have put it through three different methods low, medium, and high. 8, 10, and 12. So with the 10%, a discount rate of 8%, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by the shares outstanding, and as we can see, 318 indicating 27% upside. Now these numbers are fairly subjective. You can run your own numbers through by clicking on the pinned comment below, grabbing a copy of these models, and then whether or not it's for Salesforce or any others, you can check out your values. But again, for those that do believe 10% is a little bit too high, at the 8%, just for transparency to show you, that is an intrinsic value of 275, indicating 10% upside. And for those, it should be much higher. Well, at the 12%, we can see here 366, indicating 46% upside. Let's take the 10% through anyway to the final slide. And what we do note here is with the 318, Wall Street do see a price looking very positive, 22% over the next year. Price target, in fact, $307. 
As always though, we don't stop there, we run it through the margin of safety and we use 10% if it meets our three golden criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward looking data. Now, if you believe that in today's episode, a buy up to $286, then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. And what we can see today, a 20% MOS up to $254. If you're looking for 25%, well, you would have to wait around 238. So do you believe it is a buy at a 20% MOS with upside of 22%? Maybe it's on your watch list, you're waiting for it to come further down, or maybe this isn't a company that does fit in your overall investment portfolio. As always though, do give us your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. Don't forget to sign up to the free weekly newsletter below. And as always, come and join us in the Patreon where we do discuss our weekly buys and sells. As always, have a great day and we'll see you all on the next one.